This is another video where we're looking at the relationship between three distributions and how we can use R to help us calculate things related to confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. So we're looking at the population that we're trying to study. We're looking at a sample size of size n uh, under the right circumstances, the distribution of all sample means of size n will produce a normal distribution with a mean that's the same as the mean of the population and a standard deviation, sometimes called the standard error, uh, equal to the standard deviation of the sample divided by this uh, square root of n. In that situation, we can take values up here and see how they compare in a t-distribution to calculate some percentages. So let's look at another, another problem here. Here's the situation. We have a random sample of 12 size A batteries for toys. Okay, so this sample size is going to be 12. That's also going to mean that the degrees of freedom if we come down and work in t is going to be 11. Okay, uh, it has a mean of 3.85, that's our sample mean, and a standard deviation of 0 0.91, that's a sample standard deviation, and we want to find the critical values t star for a 99% confidence interval. Okay, a 99% confidence interval means that we're going to be looking down down here and trying to find a situation where 99% of the population is centered here. That means that 1% is going to be out in the two tails. So half of 1% will be out here, 0 0.005, and the other half will be down here, 0 0.005. And actually, they were asking us, what's the T star value? They're really asking us for this value right here. And that's going to be easy to find with, uh, with R, because we can simply look at QT of 1 minus 0 0.005 because what we're looking for if I knew this this area down here which will be 1 minus the little piece of area that's up there in the top then then I need to find the the quantile associated with that and the degrees of freedom re remember that the sample size up here was 12 okay so the degrees of freedom is going to be, oops, I'm sorry, let me get down here to the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom is going to be 11. Okay, so that's the first part of that calculation. So there's that T value that we're looking for. And just to confirm that we're going in the right direction, we'll do a a quick check there and verify that that's right. Now we're interested in finding the margin of error if we were we're looking at uh, at building the the confidence interval. Now we'd also need to find the uh, the the margin of error, which means we need to to take this number of standard deviations that we found from the t star and times it times uh, this uh, standard error. So let's just do a little bit of calculating with R here again. Um, we know that uh, the standard error, I'll just call it SE for now, is really going to be defined by, uh, oh, let me do it this way. Oh, that's right. The standard error is really going to be defined by uh, the population, the sample standard deviation. I'm looking up there to find out where that is. 
uh, with a standard deviation of 0 0.91 hours divided by the square root of the sample size and the sample size was 12 okay so that's what the the standard error is but the margin of error is going to be let's come back here remember when we calculated that t value let me just call that t for right now so that I can keep track of it so there was that that t star that we were looking at the margin of error is just going to be that t value times the standard error so there's the the part that we're looking for and we'll check our answers and of course that's right okay so we haven't actually completed the question of what the confidence interval is but we've got all the parts now this last calculation that, that we that we did was really the margin of error Okay, I'm going to call that ME for margin of error. Okay. And so we could find the confidence interval. They didn't ask us to do that here, but we could find the confidence interval in this problem because we knew that the mean was 3.85, and it would just be the mean minus the margin of error. That would be the lower bound. Okay, and it would be 3.85 plus that margin of error would be the upper bound. So in this problem, they were just asking us for some of the parts that we need to put together to be able to find that confidence interval. Okay.